so Wendy was telling me the other day that she didn't get quite enough blackberries to uh, uh, do anything with. So this morning I'm going to surprise her by picking some blackberries for her. I'm actually a little conflicted about blackberries. I've spent so much time trying to eradicate them from our place, but they are delicious. I'm just glad these are far enough down the road from our place that I don't have to worry about blackberries um, invading our territory. I'm back here at our place now. Uh, the camera battery ran out while I was picking the blackberries, but how many blackberries do you really need to see picked anyways? But it was a pretty good haul for today, and uh, I hope Wendy likes it. I was just very helpfully informed that one bucket of blackberries wasn't gonna be enough. So here's bucket number two. Brian went out and he did some foraging and got me all of these great blackberries. And so what I've decided to do with them is to make some fruit leather. I've never done that before, so this will be my first time doing it. I'm going to wash these up, pick through them, get rid of any that aren't looking so good anymore because sometimes when you pick them, by the time they reach the fridge and get out to what you're going to do with them, they, some of them have already turned a little. That's just how it is when you go out and forage for berries. So we're going to get these cleaned up and then I will walk you through the steps I'm taking. Okay? So we've went ahead and got these cleaned. I've got another whole basket full of them clean in the sink. And I've got my first six cups here ready to put into the blender. What I'm gonna do is blend these down and then I'll show you how I put it through the food mill. Uh, that will take out the majority of the seeds because nobody likes seeds in their fruit leathers. That's just gross. So for some reason my recipe doesn't ask you to do that. So we'll see how this goes. I may have to add a little bit more thickener. We'll see what it looks like after I get it going. Um, as I said, this is my first time doing this, so this may be total disaster, and you'll get to watch that. Fun. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and do this, this blender stuff off camera, and then you guys can catch up with me when I start doing the food mill. Okay, so I've got a lot of blackberries here. Um, this is 8, 10, probably another seven in here and then I've got maybe a cup left to blend up so whatever that is I'll do the math later so I'm going to 
very carefully start putting this into my food mill. And usually what I like to do with this is just kind of get it almost up to where the mesh stops and transfer that to my sink. It's such a mess. And it's already starting to drain through, which is great. And then I take my mill thing. <laughs> Somebody tell me what this thing is. A muddler? I don't know. It's not really muddling, I guess. That would be like what you do with, I don't know, mint to make something taste a little more minty when you throw some fresh mint leaves in it. Um, I'm not sure what this little mill thing is. It's made of wood. It goes around in circles. So what I'm doing is just basically moving things around so that the seeds want to stay in and all that good juice wants to go into my little ice cream pail. Um, this is probably the best thing I found to fit under this thing. I don't know. Some They really need to give you a, a vessel to go with this thing. If somebody would please do that, that would be great. Mm, so yummy. And this is just the boring part where you sit here and you sit here and you kind of wait for all this stuff to go through. And usually between batches, I like to rinse some of the seeds out because it does start to get really gunky in here. I should show you guys what it looks like right now so you can see in a minute. So right now, you can see how it's kind of still thick and glistening and it doesn't look that much different from the original. Um, but you're starting to see a little bit of the seeds more as I do this. And the good juice is just dripping down into that bottom area. So, hopefully that will work out and we will eventually have our berry juice. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick peek in here so you guys could see. This is what I'm talking about when I say seeds. Let me see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. Get a better picture. So that is our seed. So we're going to toss that and then everything that is below those is yummy seed free juice. Yay. Okay. So that took forever. Um, I finally got all the blackberries strained and I'm so glad I'm done. It took a really long time. Um, just kind of tedious process. So now though, I have this beautiful batch of blackberry juice. Can you see that? Oh, it's so beautiful. However though, what I realized when I was getting the rest of everything ready was that I only have two of these. So I went on to Amazon and I'm ordering some more, but I will, I will have to maybe delay some of this. I don't, I'm a little worried about what will happen if I try cooking this without having it ready to go, because I think what will happen is it will gum up and I don't want that. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to put this in the fridge and I'm going to wait and hopefully it will be good to go later and we will have some blackberry leather, yay. So stay tuned and I will finish this up in a few days. So we're back and I have my blackberries, I have my dehydrator set up, and I have everything we need, including kombucha. I have blueberry ginger kombucha here just to help me do this so um so let's go ahead and get started making this fruit leather 
The first thing I'm going to add here is I have five tablespoons of corn syrup. Now this is my first time making this. In the future what I might do is make smaller batches and experiment with something else like maybe an agave syrup or honey although this is going to be heated up quite a bit in here so maybe honey wouldn't work. Um, but there, there may be some, some other options. If you know of an option please let me know and I'll try that. But for right now we're going to go with what the recipe says to do which is put this corn syrup in here. Um, yeah, and my, my figures are still really <laughs> blueberried, blackberried. So that it, if you think my fingers are dirty, it's just that they've got blackberry stained on them. And so we'll add our corn syrup. And right now I don't have the heat on because I want to get this good and mixed a little bit first. because technically you're supposed to put these berries all in a blender with all the other ingredients and blend it all up and then put it in your pan. But since I'm a rebel and I did not want to have seeds, I did it differently. And so when changing recipes, you usually only want to change one thing at a time if you can. Otherwise, disaster can ensue very quickly. Not that it can anyways, but you know what I mean. So I have a new bottle of lemon juice here. And I just get cheap lemon juice when I'm using it for this kind of thing. Um, you really want to shake it up. Because you, the, I don't know if you can see, but there's sediment on the bottom. And you want it to be a fairly good, consistent lemon juice when you're make, using it for preserving, canning, this kind of stuff because you do need that citric acid to be pretty precise. So I am going to do two and a half tablespoons. I'm just going to eyeball that last tablespoon. So there's one, there's two, and here comes our half. And yes, I do have pink. <laughs> don't make fun of me I have I also have my stainless steel which I use first and then when everything gets dirty then I start using those so now we're going to add one two and a half teaspoons of cornstarch. So unfortunately this is a little heavy on the corn stuff which isn't isn't my preferred but we'll, we'll go with this for now just to see. And a little taste of kombucha and then I'll get a whisk. do is bring this to a boil which will take a little bit because we have a lot of liquid it's been in the refrigerator and it's quite thick so but we want to get this to a boil and then we will go from there so I won't make you watch me stir while this is boiling, but you can see that it, it fairly easily mixed in there. I just want to make sure that it gets good mixed because like I said, the directions did say to use the blender, but we don't want seeds. This is a no seed channel, unless we're planting them. <laughs> and speaking of planting them, one of the things that Brian did is, I so I put the, the blackberry seeds into my compost pail, which he usually takes out and throws into our compost, and apparently that's horrifying because Brian is really worried that those 
blackberry seeds will sprout into a gazillion blackberries. But I'm, I'm just not sure. So you tell us, do you need a, a existing blackberry to make a blackberry? So do you need the vine? Or can blackberry seeds sprout blackberries? I just don't know. Um, I, I'm kind of on the fence on this one. So I would really love to know what you guys know about blackberries and how they grow. And if putting blackberries, massive amounts of blackberry seeds in our compost would be a bad thing for people who don't want blackberries growing everywhere. So let us know your thoughts on that. But we'll get this to a boil and then we'll come back. One of the things I'm noticing with these blackberries as they're starting to come up to heat is that there is a skim forming, or a scum I should say, forming on the top. And when I was growing up, we would save the this, this scum and we would you know, put it on toast or something like that when we were making jams. Um, from what I know, or understand, I guess I should say, this lighter colored stuff that I call scum is basically the, the impurities being released to the surface. So what I'm going to do, just because that's my understanding of blackberry chemistry, <laughs> or berry chemistry in general, I guess, is is that that is not something that you want to preserve. So I'm going to go ahead and skim that off the top. The way I like to do that is to take a spoon, just a regular tablespoon, and a little measuring type container where I would put something if I were measuring it out beforehand and I'm just going to gently as things come to a boil skim that off the top. I'm not too worried about having a little bit in there but I do want to get some of that foamy stuff off the top just in case. I think, if nothing else, this probably adds to the the richer blackberry flavor of things. So it's just a nice extra step. This wasn't in my directions at all to do this, so I may be just being overly cautious here. But since these are blackberries that we picked off the side of the road, and even though I washed them really, really well. You know, just in case some of these potential impurities are something that we don't want to eat, I'm just going to get rid of this today. Um, like I said, when, when I was a kid, we would put this stuff on, on toast or on to our... Um, I really liked it on English muffins, but then who doesn't love everything on English muffins? <laughs> Come on, they're English muffins. They're crusty and delicious. So a as we go, I'll just skim that all off, and and by the end we should have a nice, rich product. So we're up to a boil now, and I'm kind of skimming things off as we go. But for right now, we're going to let this boil and. I'm going to put my timer on for two minutes and reduce my heat to about medium. And give it a good stir. You can see there's some foam to deal with, that sort of thing. I think some of this is just from stirring though, so I'll let it settle for a second. And then I'll do some more skimming on that closer to that end of the two minutes. And then we'll be right back. Okay, so we are completely up to a boil now. And I've turned it off. It's been two minutes. 
and you can see that it's just really nice. I've skimmed what I'm going to skim off and now all that's left is to prepare our sheet and get this on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just spray, this is just canola oil, I'm just going to spray a little bit of that on there and wipe it in some. And really I'm just being a little lazy by not just putting some canola oil on my hands and doing it. Um, but there, this will work for today. So, and I know this ladle is about a half a cup. So I need a cup on each of these sheets. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this half cup and just slide right up here and put this on trying to get it as even as possible, knowing that I've got half of it there and the other half here. And as you're doing this, this is really hot, so it's gonna settle some. And just be careful because this is very hot. And it looks like I have a little extra that I need to make up for just to get it even, so I'm gonna add a bit more. That seems good and there we go so all that's left is to stack these back up and get our dehydrator started okay so our dehydrator is all set up I was a little precarious getting it there because this is all so hot and sticky um, and so we're gonna set the temperature to 125 which is right there and then I'm going to plug it in. And this will take between 10 and 12 hours. And then we will flip them over, do it another couple hours. And then we should have fruit leather, leather, uh, uh, fruit leather to try. So here we go, loud humming. There. We're ready to check on our fruit leather. So I'm going to unplug the dehydrator and pull out the first sheet. And we can see what it looks like. It's kind of scaly. And so what we need to do now is take this and pull each sheet carefully. Get it to where it will pull off and now what we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip these and let them dry just a little bit more maybe a couple hours on the other side just to get a little bit more moisture out you can see it pulls off pretty easily because of that oil and so I'll pull each of these sheets off this flip it over and then I'll turn that back on in the dehydrator for another couple hours and we'll check on it and see how it went okay so we're ready to see how our fruit leather did our blackberry fruit leather so I've got the dehydrator finishing up here and I'm gonna unplug it and see how it looks and then we'll call Brian up and see what he thinks. So, this is the first one. You can see it's, what I found was that it, it was a little better when I put a little bit more than I did on the first few. So you can see this piece is kind of transparent a bit. It's a little holy, so, um, as I went though, you can see this one, I laid it down a little bit more thick and I think I like that a little better. So I'll be a little more careful on future batches of fruit leather to make sure that we have a good even coat. And so what I'm gonna do with this stuff, in case you're wondering, so I'm gonna tear it and I'm just gonna roll it up so that the oily part 
is kind of on the inside. And then we can throw these in the plastic bag. I had one that I tested earlier that came out. It was one of the little bit thinner ones at the top, and so I just kind of checked to see how it would look. Um, played with it a bit to see how I liked rolling it up too before I talked to you all about that. So we'll just do that and we'll put them in a bag and then we will have fruit leather. So the next thing is to see if our chief test taste tester likes these. What do you think? It tastes better than leather. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a fruit roll-up though, it's not like, it's yeah. a, that's well, what a leather is? That's a, that's what fruit leather is, mm, yeah. Okay. Fruit roll-up is a brand name. That's pretty good. Yeah. Cool. I think it's a success. Maybe uh, we can do blackberry ice cream next. Maybe you can make things. 